My name is Tui Snyder. I write books, I give talks, I do a lot of research, and I lead cemetery tours as well. I've been really lucky to have traveled the world, and every place I go, I am looking for the local burial ground to see what I can find there. I have been lucky enough to see cemeteries in the northern tip of Europe, uh, to the southern tip of South America. But I must say that of all the cemeteries that I have explored, the ones in Texas are some of my very favorites. And today I am going to be leading you on a virtual cemetery tour through Austin's historic Oakwood Cemetery. And our focus today is going to be on cemetery symbols. In the 1800s, there were so many different fraternal organizations, clubs, secret societies. They all had different things to offer. Now here in Texas, I would say the top three that you're going to see in historic burial grounds are the Masons, the Independent Order of the Odd Fellows, and the Woodmen of the World. Here we have the most recognizable insignia for the Masons. It is the compass and the square with the G in the middle. Uh, the compass stands for your moral compass and the square is for keeping things right, you know, right angle. It's all about morality. Now the G stands for generations, gnosis, which is just Greek word for knowledge, and God, the grand architect. As you explore historic cemeteries in the south of the United States, some of the most eye-catching stones you are going to see are the tree stones for members of the Woodmen of the World. This was a fraternal organization that was created in the 1800s by a man named Joseph Root. And one of the tenets of being a member of the Woodmen, one of the benefits that you really wanted was that you would have a headstone as a member. And they even today, although they, they quit in the 1930s, they quit offering these tree stones to their members, but they still have a saying that no woodman shall lie in an unmarked grave, which was a real concern for working class people uh, back in the 1800s because uh, it was not easy to find or afford insurance. And so the Woodmen offered a great, um, it was a great solution for people who wanted to have these death benefits. Now, uh, we can tell this is an actual Woodman of the World headstone or tombstone because it says Woodman of the World on it. And here it also says, Doom Toss at Clamat, which is their motto, meaning those silent he speaks. So when the Woodmen of the World was established in the late 1800s. It was originally a white only fraternal group. However, in 1910, two men from Austin, Texas, created a splinter group um, affiliated with the Woodmen of the World, but this was for black people and it was called the American Woodmen. And so they have some different symbols on their headstones. They have a tree of life, and here they have some palm fronds for the rec resurrection. Obviously the, the tree stone as well is another indication that this is affiliated with Woodmen. It wasn't until 1994 that the American Woodmen merged with the big Woodmen of the world. So now they are rolled into one group and Woodmen of the world still exist today. This monument has a rather unusual epitaph. It says, death leaves a shining mark. And it refers to a a series of poems that were written in the 1740s by a guy named Edward Young. And I don't know if this fellow read those poems and was inspired by them, or if his friends chose this epitaph for him after he died. Because the meaning of death leaving a shining mark is that death 
looks for those who are seeking glory or who have attained some fame, those who are maybe standing out from the crowd and they're doing well. So this is very cryptic. It makes me wonder if maybe this fellow was struck down just as life seemed to be turning his way and maybe his friends chose this epitaph for him or maybe he just loved that poem by Edward Young. It does muse about the meaning of life and death at great length. So either he was inspired by it or his friends were saying, what a bummer, he was struck down at, in his prime. As I mentioned before, when you see three chains and the letters F, L, and T, it's your heads up clue that you are at the grave of one of the members of the Order of Odd Fellows. Now this grave here is especially exciting because this isn't just the regular Odd Fellows, this is the African American branch of the Odd Fellows. And you can tell because it says G-U-O-O-F, and that stands for the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows. This is indicative that there were African Americans here in Austin who were doing quite well. This is a pricey stone. He must have been some sort of businessman. We also have what I think is interesting here, a very common symbol associated with Odd Fellows. They have a lot of symbols. They've been around since the 1700s. Um, but when you see the Odd Fellows, you usually see a, a hand with a heart in the palm. The point of the heart is facing down, and this one's facing upwards. So that's different. This monument is laden with really interesting symbols. Uh, people often think that if you were a member of the Odd Fellows, for instance, that you couldn't also be a member of the Masons, but that's far from the case. Uh, you wanted to belong to as many of these fraternal organizations as you could, quite simply because they had different things to offer. Some had better death benefits and burial benefits than others. Some might offer a headstone. Some had uh, ideas of uh, pensions or uh, benefits to take care of your family if you were a man who uh, was disabled. So there were a lot of things they offered. Some were simply drinking clubs. So they catered to a lot of needs. Now this one, here we have a uh, indication. First off, we see the three links, the three chain links with FLT. And sometimes people re simply refer to the inter International Order of Odd Fellows as the three link society. Um, the F, L, and T stand for friendship, love, and truth. And from a distance, we just know that this person was a member of the International Order of the Odd Fellows. Uh, now we have the hand with a heart in it, which stands for charity given with an open heart, a symbol of death, the hourglass, just letting us know that his time has run out. And here we have three columns. They're all different styles. Now these have F, H, and C on them. This stands for faith, hope, and charity. The one in the middle with hope is topped with a lotus, which is actually an Egyptian revival symbol to have a lotus topped column. If you ever visit Egypt, you're going to see lotus topped columns everywhere. Up here, we have an indication that this man is a Mason because we see the all seeing eye of God pretty explanatory. God sees all. And now sometimes these monograms are simply the family monograms. You know, William J. Smith, you'll see WJS and it's just mushed together. But this one is a very particular one. It stands for Ancient Order of Mysteries. Now I have also heard it called the Ancient Order of Mutts. Not referring to a dog here, mutts in that case stands for men united through service. So in either case, the ancient order of mysteries is an indication that this person was a member of the Masons as well. So here we have someone who was an odd fellow and a Mason. This is an exciting one. It's a little bit fancier than I've seen normally, but this emblem right here indicates that this person belonged to the Knights Templar. Now I'm not talking about the original Knights Templar that back in the Middle Ages protected Christian pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem. I'm talking about the offshoot from the Masons that was created in the 1700s when they incorporated some of the rituals and ideas from the Knights Templar to create that philanthropic organization. Now, to be a Knights Templar, you have to be a Mason 
and you have to be a Christian. All other Masons, you only have to believe in a supreme being. Now, the symbols on it are pretty cool. We've got a Maltese cross, and on it, we it says in Latin, and pardon my Latin pronunciation, I usually read it rather than speak it, but this is in hoc signo vincus, which means in this sign ye shall conquer. That lets you know that you're looking at a Knights Templar grave. In the center, we have the cross and the crown for the kingdom of heaven. And up here, we have a little Masonic compass and square, which is interesting. You don't often see the extra symbols that they have in here. I think that's an, a little bonus on this one. That's why I got very excited when I saw it. And I was just told this is the only skull and crossbones in Oakwood Cemetery. Here in Texas, we don't see a lot of skull and crossbones because that symbology uh, is more linked to the 1700s and before. Oh, and it's also over here. This is pretty neat. They have the uh, grave diggers tools. So we have a pick and a shovel and we have a, a, a Templar cross over here with a sword. So this is very laden in symbols. Here we have a double-headed eagle of Lagash, which is quite an ancient symbol, but it's used by the Masons. And when you see it on a headstone like this, not only does it let you know that this person was a member of the Masons, but they were a member of the Scottish Rite branch of the Masons. So when you become a Mason, the first three degrees that you earn are called the Blue Lodge, after that, you get to decide, do I want to be a Scottish Rite Mason or a York Rite Mason? And so you could tell that this person chose to become a Scottish Rite Mason. And if you look close, you can barely make out that they made it to the 32nd degree in Masons, which is the highest degree you can earn as a Mason. Now you can become a 33 degree Mason, but that is degree is bestowed upon you for going above and beyond. So you don't know if you will get there or not. This person worked very hard and became a 32nd degree Mason. I am so glad that we have an example of this particular star. I get more emails about this particular cemetery symbol than any other. And I blame Hollywood, <laughs> Stephen King, you know, things like that. Here's why. I get emails and I kid you not, people are very concerned when they go to visit an ancestor's grave for the first time and they see, horror of horrors, they see a pentagram on the headstone. And they send me an email saying, was grandma a witch? And they're very upset and frightened. And I have to explain that pentagram is just a word with Greek origins, penta meaning five, gram meaning lines. Now, if you're watching a Hollywood movie, that's an entirely different context than being in a historic cemetery. So you have to take context into consideration. A Christian cemetery is probably not going to have a bunch of people, high members of the church, right next to a Satan worshiper with some really obvious markings. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now, this pentagram that we have here indicates that this person was a member of the Order of the Eastern Star, and that's the female auxiliary of the Masons. And the Eastern Star refers to the Star of Bethlehem that led the wise men to Jesus. Now, the different rays of the star stand for five different biblical heroines. And these are women that you study and learn from, take lessons from when you are a member of the Order of the Eastern Stars. So these are Ada, Ruth, Electa, uh, Martha, and Esther. And those are the five uh, biblical heroines. Each of them have a little symbol here to represent them. And you will study there. It's like the five different positions you can have as a woman. You can be a daughter. You can be a mother. You can be a widow. So you're learning what those life lessons would be in each case from a Christian perspective. Uh, now, this is something that really gets people worried is when they see this acronym inside this star. It says fatal, which sounds very dire, right? Fatal, oh my gosh. That's actually the motto from, for the Order of the Eastern Star. And it simply stands for fairest among 10,000, altogether lovely, which is 
so much nicer than fatal, right? It's not, not nearly as grim sounding. The reason we see it pointing in this direction with this one pointing to the ground is to indicate the connection between heaven and earth. So that's another thing. People get worried about seeing a pentagram in this position. So nothing to fear. It just means that if this is your ancestor you're looking into, they were a member of the female auxiliary for the Masons, and that is the Order of the Eastern Star, and they are still in operation today. At first glance, you might mistake this insignia for the Masonic compass and square. You might think this person was a Mason, but that is not what they are telling us here. Here we have a compass, and we have a rule, a carpenter's rule, and we have this phrase, labor omnia vincit. That's Latin, and sorry for butchering the Latin out there, but that is Latin for work conquers all. And it is the motto for the United Brotherhood of Carpenters, and they still exist to this day, and they have the same insignia. Uh, the compass stands for your moral compass, and the, the carpenter's rule stands for the golden rule, so do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In the middle, in the center here, it's a little hard to see what that is, but that is a, a jack plane, you know, a carpentry for shaving wood, a plane, it's a type of plane, so it's a carpentry tool, a tool of their trade. And so that is what this symbol is all about. It's not Masonic, it's United Brotherhood of Carpenters. Now, one thing that's really fascinating about this monument is that Mr. Radke belonged to a lot of different fraternal organizations. I spoke earlier about how you wanted to belong to as many different fraternal clubs as you could because they all provided different uh, needs for you. As I said, some were simply drinking clubs. There were a lot of needs to fill. Mr. Radke, from what I can tell on this stone, belonged to at least four of these fraternal organizations, and two of them are defunct. He belonged to the Ancient Order of Mysteries, which I spoke of earlier. Also here, because of the three-link chain and the hand with a heart, we can tell that he was a member of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows. But on either side of this monument, we see two very interesting uh, groups that he belonged to that are now defunct. Neither of them lasted for very long. The first one I want to talk about is actually the Ancient Order of United Workers. And that was one of the very first of these fraternal groups to offer insurance benefits and death benefits. So that's quite interesting. Now it was one of the first, but it didn't last very long um, into the 1900s and it just petered out for various reasons. The other one over here, it says K of H, and that stands for Knights of Honor, a fraternal group, was created by a doctor who lived in Kentucky in the late 1800s, and he was a member of the Odd Fellows. he was also a Mason, and he thought, why don't I start one of these groups? Maybe I could make some money, at least that's what his detractors claim because people who joined the Knights of Honor noticed that a lot of the rituals were kind of cobbled together from the Odd Fellows and the Masons. It wasn't a very original group. Like I said, this just came about in the late 1800s, whereas the Masons and the Odd Fellows, the Odd Fellows have been around. They were started in England in the 1700s, and the Masons, well, it's debatable exactly when they began, so I'm not going to say, but they've both been around a very long time. So this doctor, he came, kind of came up with his Knights of Honor, and you run into K of H every now and then throughout the South, but by the early 1900s, uh, maybe 1916 or so, it had gone under as well. Here we have a headstone for a husband and wife, we have the wife's name on this side, and on the other side, we have the husband's name. Uh, now this cube, and the way it's kind of askew, is a reference to sacred geometry, which kind of makes me wonder if these two were Masons. He might have been a Mason, she might have been an Order of the Eastern Star, uh, because this is a, a reference to sacred geometry. So in sacred geometry, uh, the cube stands for Earth, because when you put it on, on the ground normally, the way you see a cube, the base 
is on the ground, so it touches the earth. But when you see it in this uh, direction, the way it's uh, placed, when you see the cube with the point up here and a point down here, it's yet another uh, symbolic reference to the connection between heaven and earth. At first glance, you could easily mistake this tree stone for a woodman of the world marker. First off, it is a tree. It's meant to look like a tree. It's chopped to represent a life cut short, just as you would see on a woodman marker. You often see ivy on a woodman marker. Ivy clings to you through thick and thin, so it stands for faithfulness and friendship. Uh, on tree on woodman stones, you sometimes see ferns. Ferns stand for humility, since ferns grow best in the shade. However, you do not see the woodman motto, which is Doom Tosset Plamat, which means those silent he speaks. And it's missing some other things that uh, are often associated with the woodman. But the main thing is it does not say, mention woodman on here, nor does it have their motto. So this is simply a tree stone with some very nice symbolism.